Ready? Yeah. Ah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I mean, I didn't know you've been here for five years. No, three you know, years. three years. Ah. Yeah. I, mean, I just, I mean, feels like a long time. you know. Because it moves fast. Like, I'm always so busy. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, congratulations on your retirement. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering what your post. I'm an old man plan. now. <laughs> I wonder what your post retirement plans are. Are you looking more into coaching maybe, admin, management? Which ones, you know, which ones on your mind? I think for me, I think uh, it's really been a blessing. My my career has been a, a massive blessing for me and for my family. I think looking back at my career has been I mean, it's it's something you uh, you can ask for more, uh, you know. I've been very lucky and very fortunate to have had the sort of career that I've had. I mean, in terms of winning and playing and uh, doing the things that I have to do and juggling it also with the family, with with kids and everything. I think it's to be able to still remain as disciplined as I can, as I could, to be able to achieve those things. I, I think it's been a massive blessing for me and uh, I mean looking back at it there's no single regret in my in my career and who knows what the future will bring and here we are you know uh, we're here. The first um, beautiful thing that has happened you know it's obviously to to be here with this wonderful company amazing company uh, to be able to work together and see how we can uh, change people's life, to see how we can give people freedom. It's about freedom, it's about mobility, it's about smile, it's about how you want to approach life. And life should be approached in terms of smiling, being free, being mobile, you, your family, to be able to travel wherever you want to go. So, I mean, Rip Trust fits the bill for me. and. Uh, Let's see how we can. Uh, we're here. I mean, I don't want to jump the gun to make a, an announcement when it's not there yet, because David is gonna kill me. So <laughs> let's wait for him to do that. But sports-wise, if you had to pick right now, coaching, admin, which one? Or you're done with sports? No, for now? no. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't like to say I'm done with with sports. Obviously, for me, it's been my life for, 20, for the past 20 years. I love being into sports, into football. Uh, I enjoy my time spending time on the pitch, uh, in the locker room with the, you know, with the boys. I think for me, I, I wouldn't rule out anything. But if you can ask me now, uh, I'd probably say admin. I like to be somewhere where I can help from the top to organize, to make sure things are run properly. Because I know with my experience, um, the things that I've seen and worked under so many coaches, so many uh, sports directors and presidents as well of football clubs. I, 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 with my experience of all that, I can see how I can help from the top. Uh, management, I don't really see myself in it, but you can never say never. But uh, I would like to be probably maybe a sporting director of a football club someday. And you've had, I mean, as you said, 20 years yeah. from under 17 to, you have lived the life. I but have. I'm sure, I mean, life is ups and downs, right? Can you share with me some of your most, maybe potent on your mind, high points, low points, maybe regrets, if there are any? 
there's so many things that I have to that that has happened that people know. You know, I had so many highs, but my lows were not a lot, and people don't know so much about it. Take for example, my dad was kidnapped twice. You know, and this was a massive low. And the thing is, nobody knew how, nobody knows how I dealt with that, how I was able to maneuver things and still remain professional. People, some people will go off in the wrong way and start doing crazy things, drinking, doing drugs and things like that. But I managed to stay in a disciplined uh, way and be able to carry on with my career. It was very, very hard, very tough. You can imagine if your dad has been kidnapped twice. But these are the things that a lot of people don't know. Um, but I, I hopefully I write a book someday or I have a documentary. So I don't want to give you too much. <laughs> give me a little though. Give me, give me a, a hint into because I mean between you and I, we know you know what the situation is like back home with security. We know what people have to resort to receiving yeah. the news. Yeah. Uh, sometimes families have to rally round. But give us a hint into Mikhail and what, how he handled this. Oh, it was tough. It was really tough. I think the second one was when we were about to play against Argentina in the last. You remember the last in the World Cup, the deciding game. I think it was a knockout state against Argentina. I literally got the call two hours, an hour and a half before the game, and I picked up the phone. I was, I knelt down, I prayed. Because I always do that before game. And then I prayed after finished praying. And then I picked up my phone. I saw five minutes ago from my brother. And I, I was like, what's going on? And I called him back. And it was like, this is the news. Uh, Dad has been kidnapped. So, um, so I, I definitely I, I had to go to play. I had no choice. The, line, the, 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 the team has been selected already. I am the captain. I, I could not go to the boys with that news because it's the deciding game for us to go through or not. So it was a tough decision, but it's a decision that I had to take. I had to go out and play. I had to go out and lead the team. And um, yeah, I did that. I played the game with no issues. But yeah, that was really tough. That was a tough moment. When you talk about tough moments in people's life, in people's career, it was definitely for me uh, the highlight of it. To, to be carrying that burden and then have to perform for the world yeah. in a sense yeah. because you know football fans sometimes some some are merciful some are not you know it's like they celebrate your high so well yeah. and when it's low they, they don't yeah. show so much mercy yeah exactly and, and I remember going out on the tunnel and I had to put on a a fake smile for the for my team they had to see me if I'm sitting if I'm standing in front of them with a sad face, it will reflect on the whole team. I had to go there with a, with a motivation, speech and face and everything to, to make sure, at which we did play really, really well. We, we lost, obviously, we considered a goal in the last seconds of the game. If not, we would have gone through. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, those are one of the things. Having a bad game, having a bad day, doesn't really lead to things like that. When you have your dad kidnapped twice and you have to pay so much money you know, to get him out. Uh, it's just, like I said, I write a book. You, I'm giving you too much though. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, um, Yossi Moreno yeah. converted you into a defensive midfielder at Chelsea and you went on to become a crucial member of the team, of yeah. course. Um, even after he left, uh, yet some analysts insist that the special one destroyed your No, he didn't destroy it, no. But the thing with that, listen, I, I, from growing up, I was a more creative uh, player. I was very creative. I was very, uh, you know, how do you put it? Everything ran through me in terms, from the under 17, under the, the 20s. And then on the 23s, every time I played for the national team, like you know, everything goes through me. A leader of mine. Yeah, until I finished my international career. It was like that from day one till the end. Everything went through me. 
and then when I went to Chelsea, uh, I had to step back a bit because there were so many big players, so many amazing football players. Michael Balak, uh, Makalele, Frank Lampard, John Terry, Didier Drogba, Jeremy Njit, so many big name players. And I had to like step back. Cause, yeah, no, I think that decision, you know, we, we, we had a chat together and we spoke about it. And obviously we had so many creative football players at Chelsea. And we spoke about it, it's like, I see you playing a lot more uh, defensively because number one you don't give the ball away too much you are you're very confident on the ball and I want to build my my football from the back I want to play from the back and I see you as a player who can be able to do that and also Makalele was just finishing his career he was leaving and so it's like there's a there, there, there is a spot for you here I want you to to step into his shoes and we spoke about it and and then we both decided you know what this is this is a good idea and uh, and that's something we both decided together do you feel that maybe it was did you feel like it was a risk did you have a feeling like uh, okay yeah i could have yeah i could have easily say you know what i don't want to play in that position i want to go to another club and be more free and play more free and be who i want to be on the pitch but then I decided to stay at the club because I knew it was a great club. It was a club where we could, uh, where I could achieve a lot of success and be successful. So, um, and looking back at it today, there is no, definitely no regret, no issues. I, I, I'm really happy with the decision I made. Fantastic. When, when was the last time you spoke with him? <laughs> sometimes he answers my phone call, sometimes he doesn't. He's a bit, <laughs> he's a bit of a grumpy old man right now, let's put it that way. But uh, he's doing really well with Roma, and I uh, yeah, and I wish him all the best. Uh, amazing man, amazing coach, amazing career, uh, an amazing father to his family, and uh, he, he's someone that I look up to a lot. Favorite club coach and yeah. why? Yeah, yeah. Him? Sorry? Who's your favorite club uh, club coach and why? He, you know, he's up there. He's up there. I put him there, and uh, probably say, uh, you know, Angelotti was also good. Very, very good coach. Very good to me. Uh, Gus hitting. I, I have a lot. You know, when I played for Chelsea, during our time, we had a new coach every year because Roman doesn't mess around. <laughs> if you don't win, you're out of the door. So I played under so many coaches, and there was so many of them that I that I had a good uh, that I had a good uh, moment with. So uh, yeah, a few of them. Yeah. So no one favorite. No one, but Mourinho's on top. Yeah, let's say. <laughs> um, favorite teammate and why? Favorite teammate. Wow. Yeah, it's a tough one. That it's a tough one because when I was playing, the, I had this thing where they used to call me and Solomon Kalu that we twins because we used to mess around a lot. We were the naughty, naughty kids on the block. Um, but I'll say John Terry. John Terry is someone that I um, we're very, very close. We we lived same same road. He was like two, three meters away from my. We lived in same same road. So. He was my neighbor, um, so we we we're very close. We keep in contact today. We speak. We send each other funny messages. We you know there's this banter still going on. Drogba as well. We still keep in touch. Uh, he's like my big brother. I call him and you know I speak to him a lot. And also Frank Lampard. We still keep up in touch a lot. Um, he he's now a manager. He's doing well. Um, you know, he still has time to sometimes text me and ask how, how I'm doing. So these guys, I, I do keep in touch with them a lot and, they, um, and they're still very good friends to me. Fiercest opponent. Fiercest, ooh. I've always said the toughest player I've played against. If you say fiercest, obviously Messi is the, is the, but if you say toughest, as in tough. I'll go. I'll probably go with Steven Gerrard. For me, Steven Gerrard was the toughest opponent I've played against. Because this guy was, uh, he was something else. He was rough. He was quick. 
technical, powerful. Yeah, he had everything. He had everything. Like if I tackle him, he would tackle me back. You know, he was that kind of player that he had everything. But Messi was just a genius. You know, Messi was a, just a football player. But for me, Steven Gerrard for sure was the toughest player I've played against. That's exciting. Like, yeah. I just, I wish I could be in your brain for like two minutes. And just, <laughs> you know, the excitement that people feel watching. I wonder if it's the same excitement when you're playing. Anyway, so decision to reject Manchester for is still controversial. You After know how long? Right? How long ago was that? How long is that? <laughs> you tell me. Um, but what was the main reason? Main. Perhaps you've never had to share that. But maybe you share that today. Main reason behind it. I wouldn't put a, a finger on it though, but you know, it was a lot like for me, you could look at it then and try, and balance, try to balance it. Obviously, so Alex Ferguson was the, was the guy then, isn't it? He was the boss of the coaches. And then you have this young guy coming up, Mourinho, who's just won the Premier League twice with Chelsea. And then I had to decide where, 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 which team is going to fit me most, uh, better. Um, should I go with a more experienced manager or go with someone who's just started winning and who's young and I can see him being with him for a very long time. And I had that decision to make. And also living in London and Manchester, you know, you had to weigh those two. But then I decided for me, uh, and Chelsea actually really, not that Manchester, Manchester wanted me so much. But I, I, yeah, I think it came down to the manager, to, 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 to the young, I put it that way, because I don't want to, it's a very um, sensitive conversation because I don't want to upset, even if Ferguson is not coaching anymore, but is somebody that we all look up to. And whatever I say now, it's probably gonna... So for me, I had to decide the city and where I would be much, much happier. And for me, Chelsea and London was, yeah, was the one. And you know, you've, you've mentioned um, any, some stuff related to family like twice yeah. or three times already in the conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, like location, and I know family is really tied to that. Um, on a final note, how has it been, you know, managing family, marriage, kids, all, all of that um, with your career? Yeah, it's been tough, obviously, for every, you know, for every family, for every marriage, for every <coughs> family relationship, kids, whatever it is, it's always tough. It's about trying to find the right balance on how you can try to make things work and also be able to focus on your career and what you want to do to be able to to remain as disciplined as much as you can and it has to come down to that uh, for for me family is very important but for me very very important family um, so I take that very very seriously and um, so so trying to work both things together for me it was just very easy very uh, because I know what I want, I know what I want to do. Uh, I love my job, I love my career, but... Best relationship advice you ever got <laughs> or would ever give anyone? Final question. This one's gonna go viral. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's a tough one, that's a tough one. You just choose your battles, choose your battles. <laughs> Yeah, choose your battles as well at home. Yeah. <laughs> I tell my husband when I get home. Yeah, choose, choose yeah, your choose your battle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so it's much. Been a great interview. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Thanks. And then um, and then we'll we'll take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> you used to that then. <laughs> <laughs>